everyone. What's up? My name is Andrew. My name is Vania. We're from 360 Ministry. Welcome, welcome home. Hey guys, welcome to 316 TV. So today we're gonna do ball cap challenge. So it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have some fun. So we're gonna have like, six people. They're gonna do uh, the challenge. So you guys don't wanna miss out. So guys, the rules are super simple, okay? You have the bottle over here, and then the bottle is halfly open. So all that you have to do is just to kick it, like Jason Salham, like kick it, like, then, whoo, and then make it like, push. Okay. 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 Super simple. And the winners get get nothing. nothing. <laughs> get nothing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yay! Guys, yang pertama, Brian Wyan. <laughs> Gampang kan? Banget. Banget. Yeah. Oh. Oke, okay, silakan. Oke, okay, each person has three time three ini ya, tiga tiga kesempatan, three chances to do it. If they cannot do it, then you're the loser. Tendang aja bre, So guys, we, for second one we have Dave Reynard. Dave, how confident are you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to be bottle cap challenge, not bottle rack challenge. <laughs> okay. Bye. For oh, the third one, we have Regin Lilnet. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Regilin has special skill. You know, everyone use shoes. See, <laughs> dia cuma pakai sandal, guys. <laughs> Regin, you have three chances, so go for it. <laughs> okay, two more, two more, two more, two more. Satu lagi, Rek. Oke, okay. for the fourth one we have Jeha. You have three chances. Yang paling banyak dia menang. Oke. Rakir, rakir, rakir. For the fifth one, yang kelima kita panggilkan JC. Bro, jadi yang lainnya semua skornya cuma baru satu 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 doang. Hmm. Cuma ada satu orang yang skornya dua. Siapa tuh? Regin. Hmm. <laughs> lu mau kalah sama Regin? <laughs> Kayaknya iya. Kayaknya lu mau kalah. Habis. Oke, okay, for the sixth one, we have the one and only Jason Riandi. come and ask what makes us different. We are different because we have the heart to prepare a generation of youth that will bring impact and this spirit of influence. We care to see young people get safe and empowered to a healthy community that is centered in Christ.
We are 316 Youth Ministry, part of the Gebe Iperje Group Cheka Tuju. We are a full English youth service that is based on John 316, the core of the gospel that has become the fuel in our ministry. We are currently one of the fastest growing youth ministry in Jakarta, Indonesia. And our cultures shape who we really are. And those cultures are. We dream big. We love to pray for one another. We are expressive in our worship. We are creative. We are spiritual contributors, not consumers. We always bring our best. And with the culture that we built, and the hunger of the Holy Spirit, we are bringing the sparks of revival everywhere we go, through conferences, retreats, and so much more. 316 is not just a place to worship. It's a prayer and healing center for those who are sick and burdened, a training ground for the youth to discover their talents, and a hub as we send the youth abroad to be the ambassador of Christ. We believe this is just the beginning, the beginning of something great, a greater revival and a greater purpose for the youth of this generation. We are the generation set on fire. The generation that will rise up. The generation that will bring impact outside the four walls of the church. The generation whose hearts are set apart for the King of Glory. The generation that will be sent to nations. The generations that will see vision. The generation that will bring grace and mercy to those we come across. We are the next generation revivalists. We are. 316 Youth Ministry. Hi, welcome home. I'm Michelle. I'm Myra. And we are from 316 Youth Ministry. And if you guys don't know about 316 yet, we're an English youth ministry in Gebe PRJ with a vision to empower the youth and create a safe space for many. It's a community, a ministry, and a home. Yes, right. It's a home from everyone. So uh, you can share the experience, this experience, uh, and you can share this uh, YouTube link to your friends, to your family, so we can uh, serve God together. Amen. And if you guys missed the Saturday live streaming, you can watch the premiere rerun on Sunday at 7 a.m. or watch it anytime at GBI PRJ's YouTube channel, right? Yes. So I invite you guys to stand up. And give the best praise for God. Okay. Good evening, church. Good evening, 316. Welcome home. I want to invite everyone to stand up. Give your best and praise and worship to Jesus today. And I know you can do that. Amen? Come on, let's clap your hands. I give you glory for all.
It's really an honor for me to be here in the midst of COVID-19 and I know some of you guys are, are in Indonesia and um, some of you guys might get vaccine already but here in Singapore we're still waiting uh, for our vaccine. Uh, I'm currently here in Singapore and I'm recording this from Heart of God Church here in Singapore and um, just want to say thank you for Pastor Hao and Pastor Leah and all the team here and we are grateful for this opportunity to serve you and um, we believe that you will be blessed as well. My name is Pastor Joshua Artono. I'm from IFGF, International Full Gospel Fellowship in Jakarta. And I'm also the head or director of IFGF Praise. And once again, I'm thankful to be here. Appreciate all the pastors and leaders for sharing this platform with me so I can be of a blessing to you. Throughout this whole month, you have been discussing of, you have been talking about this theme called waitlisted. And when I was given that theme, I said to myself, hmm, perfect. Uh, uh, it's because at this moment, I'm in my waiting period as well. Um, I don't know what YS behind the camera is waiting for, or maybe a sin on my right is waiting for, what, but we are here waiting for something to happen. The Word of God is filled with stories of people who wait. Everything that needs to be processed requires time. Anything that progresses requires time. Anything that go from point A to point B requires time. And waiting is never easy. It's never easy. Let me just say it out bluntly to your face right now. Waiting is not easy. We don't like to wait. Let's, let's, let's take for example, just, just imagine I have, a, I have an imaginary cup of noodle or instant noodle, uh, uh, pop me, indomie, where we call it back home, right? Let's take, for example, I have an imaginary cup of noodle. How many of you guys know how many minutes do we need to cook this cup of noodle or instant noodle just to make it ready for us to eat? You can type it in your chat or you can say it amongst your friends. How many minutes do you need to make this cup of noodle cook? One minute? Two minutes, 10 seconds, that's a bit pushing it though. The, the, the recommended time is about three minutes. Three minutes of waiting a cup of noodle to be cooked. Now let's, let's, let's put that into practice right now. So I have my imaginary cup in my left hand. It's already 11 o'clock at night. I'm about to go to sleep, but then my belly rumbled and I said, I need a cup of noodle. So I went to the kitchen and took this cup of noodle or instant noodle from the shelves, put it, set it on this table, poured a hot water on it, but before that you gotta open the lid first, right? Or else your hand will be burned. Open the lid, you take out all the parts that's inside, right? And then you pour the hot water. Then after that, you close the lid, put something heavy on top of it, and you leave it for three minutes. So we're going to do that. We're going to do the waiting part for three minutes. And how, I just want to know, how would you feel if nothing happens for three minutes? Would you feel comfortable or would you be okay? Let's do that. One, two, three, pouring the hot water. <laughs> Close the lid, put something heavy on top of it, and we wait. How long has it been seen? 15 seconds. It's only been 15 seconds. <laughs> Still hard. How long has it been? Why is? 45 seconds. It's not even a minute. 
I'm gonna go and put on Netflix or something, but it's so far away. Check my phone, see if someone called. No messages. How long has it been? One minute and 15. <laughs> We're halfway. It's a long time. Why is this noodle? It takes three minutes to cook. We have to find a faster way to cook this noodle. It's, it's, it's getting on my nerve. Waiting can get on your nerves. And it's only a minute and 25 seconds now. It's just, it's just, it takes too long. I need my noodle right now. Waiting is never, never easy. It's never easy. It's never easy when you wait. I believe that when you wait, there's something inside of you that is happening. It's not just, it's not when you wait and nothing happens. But when you wait, the response of waiting will reflect who you are in life. We may get agitated. We're supposed to remain calm when we wait. We may get anxious. We can't stop moving. Check your phones every like 10 seconds. We're not used to waiting anymore. Um, we live in a world where everything moves faster, especially with COVID last year, where everything, I don't know about you guys, but to me, life gets so much faster. Faster, we, we, we do things faster than before. Even millions of dollars are being poured to make machine works faster. Items are being made so that we don't have to wait anymore. People are willing to pay extra so that they don't have to wait in line in Disneyland. It's a true story, because I do that, right? And they even invented, invented Fast Pass so that we don't have to wait in line so we can just come to a recommended time slots. However, in God, in the Bible, there are many instances of waiting. Abraham waited. Moses waited. David waited. Even Jesus waited. And the disciples in Acts 1 waited too. Waiting is part of life. When we wait for something, it means that we are waiting for something that is worth waiting for. Whoa. Let's repeat that again. When we wait for something, it means that we are waiting for something that is worth waiting for. I remember when the first time I met Jessica, my wife. I'm married with one wife and two kids and one more on the way. So I'm waiting for the third one to pop out. I remember when I met Jessica back in college. And um, she was the first girl that, um, that I said, all right think she's the one. Don't tell me how you know or how I know, but I think she's the one. I have that, that, that different feeling with her, right? So I want to start right. So before asking her on a date, this is true story, her dad was actually in town from Indonesia. So I was in States at the time. Her dad was, was there in States and I wanted to pursue her or get to know her better. But before that, I asked the dad. I went over to him. I was with my, um, I wasn't, I was, I was, I was always wearing t-shirts and shorts, right? Back in college days, right? You don't have a lot of money back then. And um, I went up to him with my shorts, with my uh, home t-shirts, and I said, uncle, um, weird conversation. This is super uberly weird, right? Here, here I was. I, uh, I went up to him and I said, Uncle, hi. My name is Joshua. And, um, and he said, yeah, 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 I saw you. Um, you were the guy that played keyboard, right? Yeah, yeah, that was me. Um, listen, um, uh, I went straight to the point. I'd even ask how he was and what, how long he's going to stay in the States, I went straight to the point and I said, hey, um, I'm a friend of your daughter, Jessica. Um, uh, I kind of like her and um, I just want to ask your blessing for me to, you know, uh, get to know her better. Um, will that be okay? 
And the look on his face was just, I can't, I can't ever describe it with words. But then he said this, he said, why don't we wait? Because, you know, she's young, she's still 19 years old. And yeah, that's super young people. Uh, and then he said, why don't you wait for three years? That, that, was, that was something that was different. I did not expect that because I thought he would, he would say, okay, uh, let's, 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 uh, let's do this. Or, hey, um, yes, you may. Because I, was, I, I thought I was a good boy, but then he said, just wait for three years. So I know that waiting, it's not easy. I had to wait for six years. Because after the three years, I had to wait for another three years. Then we had, we, we had one year of just being close to each other. And then another year to prepare the wedding. Then after eight years, finally we got married. Eight long years. That's a lot of date money. <laughs> That's a lot of Christmas gifts. That's a lot of birthday gifts. That's a lot of Valentine's Day gifts. That's a lot of, what, what are other gifts? Um, Tuesday gifts, Wednesday gifts. Uh, maybe thinking about your gifts, uh, um, get well soon gifts. That's a lot of money being invested right there for eight years. I had to wait. I had to wait because she is worth waiting for. When we wait for something, it means that we are waiting for something that is worth waiting for. See, I, I want to I wanna tell you three things that you need to know about waiting. And we will learn from John 5, verse 1 to 9. John First five, verse one to nine. Let's read this together. The healing at the pool. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here are a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been invalid for 38 years. 38 years. He has been there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. He asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool. When the water is stirred, while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up. Pick up your mat and walk. Maybe you need this message in your life right now. For to get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once that man was cured. He picked up his mat and walk. He picked up his mat and walk. Father, I pray that this message will speak boldly into our lives and myself included. So does this message will speak into YS and sin in this room. Father, I pray that we will continue to put our hope and our trust and our faith in you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The first point is this. In the waiting, God knows that you have been waiting. <laughs> I love that. God knows that you have been waiting. He knows. Maybe sometimes you feel that I'm alone. I don't know how to get through this. I don't know when this shall pass. Let me tell you, God knows that you have been waiting. John 5 verse 6 says this, and I love this. He says, when Jesus saw him lying there, when Jesus saw him lying there and learn that he had been in this current condition for a long time. He asked him, do you want to get well? The word saw in Hebrew means to pay attention or paying attention. Concern, understand. 
Jesus understood that the things that you are going through or this, what this person is going through in his life, Jesus understands what you are going through in your life. He knows. He's paying attention. If you feel like you're alone, if you feel like you don't know how to get through this, if you feel like you don't know who to talk to, there's one individual that understands you and his name is Jesus. There's one individual that concerns about you, that loves you, that pays attention to every little details in your life and his name is Jesus. The word learn, that was the word saw, and now the word learn means to know, to recognize to be aware and acquire information. Woo acquire information, which means Jesus has assessed the situation and know every little detail of your condition. Because he says he has learned, meaning he, has, he, he knows every little details of your life. He knows your weakness. He knows your strengths. He knows the Every little minute that you have been going through, he knows your pain. He knows your struggle. He has learned all of that. He has recognized all of that. He is aware. He has, he has acquired all of that information. He knows what you are going through. He knows. He knows. And Jesus' intention for us is always for us to be well. That's why he said, when Jesus saw him and learned that he had been in that condition for a long time. He said, immediately he said, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? And this question is being delivered to you. Do you want to get well? Because Jesus can't do anything without you responding to that. Because he knows what you're going through. And this question is being poured to you. We, I'm asking you this question. Holy Spirit is asking to your heart right now, do you want to get well? He knows what you've been waiting for. He knows what you are going through. The second point is this. Verse 7, it says, Sir! This is after Jesus said, do you want to get well? Immediately he said, Sir! The invalid replied. No way. Yeah, I want to get well. But sir, I have no one to help me into the pool. When the water is stirred, while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Listen, this person has been there for 38 years. 38 years. That's a long time. What, a minute and 15 minutes waiting for a cup of noodle? That was long. Imagine 38 years. He has been waiting for 38 years. And it's not just him. There was the blind. There was the lame. There was the paralyzed. They have been waiting for years. But this particular person, he has been waiting for 38 years. I would imagine the first year. Whew. Yep, I heard about this pool. I'm going to go to that pool. I'm going to wait there. And then the waves start rushing. There's a movement in the water. He tried. He tried, but he, he was too late. And then maybe the next day, or maybe I, I don't know how long the period, the period uh, 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 repeats itself. But when the, when the water moves, he tried, he tried, he tried. But in the end, he said, it's been too long. I can't do it anymore. I'm just going to accept my situation. I think I'm destined to be like this. Hmm. I'm destined to live in this condition. This is where I'm supposed to be, by the pool and seeing everybody being healed but me. And that's a message for some of you maybe. Maybe you've been fighting this for so long. Maybe you've been wanting this for so long. Maybe this time you said, enough is enough. Maybe this time you said, maybe this is my destiny. Not getting a breakthrough, not getting a miracle. Praying for someone and he get healed, but I'm not, I'm still here. But let me tell you, my second point is this. You don't lose hope in the waiting. And I'm praying through this message 
that you don't lose hope in the waiting. You gain hope in the waiting. You gain faith in the waiting. Don't lose hope in the waiting because Jesus intends for you to be well. Back in the day when you're sick, the lame, the blind, paralyzed, maybe the lepers, they're considered as outcast or invalid. But that whatever the world says, who you are, maybe the world says you are invalid, you are a nobody, but God has a different destiny. He doesn't want you to stay there. He wants you to be well. And the third point is this. And it says in verse 8, Then Jesus said to him, Get up. I'm going to repeat that again because there's an, ex- there's an exclamation mark there. I believe that there's, there's a push when he said that. Jesus said to him, Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. Can you imagine being that person that's been there for 38 years? Being in that position, maybe the way he sits has always been the same for 38 years. And I think he felt like, okay, I'm fine with this condition. I don't need anybody to heal me. I'm okay. I tried to get into the pool, but no one helped me. And when you said, get up, pick up your mat and walk, I don't know how to respond to that. I would respond, I would feel, or maybe I would say to him, no, it's impossible. But in verse 9, it says, at once, at once that man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. There is an action that he did when he was cured. The third point is this, miracle happens in the waiting. Miracle happens in the waiting. And I believe God's intention is always for you to be well. I believe that miracle is happening. Miracle is on the way while you wait. All you got to do is wait for him. Is wait for him because miracle is on the way. Miracle is happening while we wait. And maybe some of you need this message right now for you to get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Now, now let, me, let me ask, what is the significance of that mat? Why do we need to get up and take that mat and walk? Why don't we just leave the mat behind? Because Jesus is saying this, that mat and him has been there for 38 years. He's been sitting on that mat for 38 years. That's where he resides. That's where everybody told him to stay because he's invalid. But when Jesus told him for him to be healed, to get up, pick up your mat and walk, Jesus is saying, you will never go back to that mat again because I have a new destiny in your life. You will never go back to the invalid because I have validified your life. You are a new being. You are a new creation. You're going to walk from faith to faith, from power to power, from glory to glory because I have destiny for your life. You don't need that mat anymore because you're never going to go back there again. You're going to pick up that mat and tell the world that this mat will no longer identify or no longer define who I am because my identity is in Christ. So when you are waiting, remember these three points. God knows that you are waiting. He knows. And don't ever lose hope in the waiting. He is there. He knows every circumstances in your life. It's just a matter of time. It's his time. And miracle will happen or is happening right now while you wait. Father, I pray that this message will continue to speak loud in our lives. That indeed in this period of waiting, We will never lose hope in you. Our faith and our hope will always be in the name of Jesus, the one who delivers the miracle. Thank you, God, for this message of life that we will never go back to the mat. We will never go back to our old life. When miracle happens, you are the one who tells us who we are in God. 
Thank you for a wonderful message. Thank you for the word of God that speaks boldly into my life right now and into the people who are watching. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for the word of God, Pastor. I feel so blessed. We feel so blessed. Right, Mayra? Yes. Yeah. Do you guys also feel blessed? Type in the chat box below if you do feel blessed. Or you can type in the fire emojis or any other emojis that show that you guys feel blessed. So now for some announcement for us. We have offering online. You can just scan the QR code that is shown on the screen or the YouTube moderator will type in the info for the bank account number in the chat box below. Right. And also print uh, print and praise report you can see on that screen. And if you guys want to join 316 Youth Ministry, you can DM our Instagram at 316 Youth Ministry. So, have a blessed Saturday and see you next week. Bye. -bye. Bye.